Hello, Tony Gaddis here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to animate a bouncing ball in OpenTunes. I would recommend going to the OpenTunes manual. Just always have that open, that way if you get stuck you can easily access it. And I always like to start with a grid. So I'm going to create a new raster layer and call this background. Hit yes. And I'm going to grab my brush and I like to use the pencil right here. This 2D pencil, a 2B pencil, not <laughs> 2D. And let's just make a quick grid. That is really fat. I'm going to pull this down. Let's see what that feels like. Yeah, that feels better. 0 0.01. And you, you don't have to do this. I just like to have a starting place kind of a perspective floor for my animation and we can always hide it later so I'm not sure how long this animation is going to be I'm just going to pull this down uh, I'm grabbing this little handle right here and I'm going to pull it down to 24 and I'm going to click this little arrow right here and change the opacity down to around 30 and then I'm going to lock this layer I'm going to go to column 2, and we can name this column. That's not a bad, bad idea, and a, it's a really good habit to get into. So I'm going to call it BG for background. And in this column, I'm going to create a new level, and I'm going to call this rough. And just leave it default, hit OK. And I'm going to rename this column to R for rough. There we go. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little. And I always like to, to tilt to rotate my canvas. I have rotate set up on a hotkey. So all I do is press it and I can rotate it. And then I hit my hotkey to go back to my brush. Okay, so let's start with a simple sphere. We'll just try to keep it real loose, okay? And I know I want it to come down, so I'm going to turn on onion skinning. I'm going to go to frame 2 and turn on onion skinning for frame 1. And I want to keep the same volume of this, but I want it to squash down. So let's go ahead and on top of this one. This way I can just kind of get a feel for my volume. Okay, clean that up a little bit. And now we can get the lasso tool. Uh, so what I did is I switched. I have a hotkey for this pointer arrow, the selection tool, and I have it on freehand. I think it defaults to rectangular. And then I just lasso the drawing I want and move it down. Okay, so now I have two key drawings. I have one, and this is the up. And then I have drawing two, which is the squash. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna erase this number two once we kind of figure out our timing. Okay, so um, right now let's just do a rough timing. Let's take uh, select frame one, and we're gonna insert frames until this drawing two, this one right here, gets down to twelve. That will be our squash. And now let's go to drawing two and insert frames until we get down to 24. Okay. 
and let's go to frame 25 and double click inside there and just type 1. And now let's move our little white triangle time marker, the end, uh, what's that called? Set stop marker. So that's the stop marker. Let's drag it up to 24. So it's right before the one. Okay, so that will loop our animation. So the ball's gonna come down, squash, and go back up. You see that? Okay, so now let's get this ball to start dropping down. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And what I want to do is slow out of this pose. So I'm going to go down to frame three. And we're just going to kind of straight ahead this part. So I'm going to hold it up here. And it's going to start dropping down like this. It has some elasticity, like a balloon with water in it. So it's going to start sagging down. And it doesn't have to be perfect. A perfect circle. We can... It's just a rough. Just keep it loose and rough. So as it comes down, did you... Notice that our drawings, they automatically changed. So when I start, started drawing here, it changed this to 2. And it changed this one to 3. It's auto-renumbering these. And that's because I, if I go to File, Preferences, Drawing, I have it on... Um, this is the default. Enable Auto-Creation, Incremental, Enable auto stretch, enable creation and hold cells, and enable auto number. So I could turn that off, but I'm going to leave it on. So as it comes down, let's go to frame 5. And we can turn on onion skinning down here at 12, just so we know where we're going. And let's turn it on at 1 and 2 so we can see where we came from. Okay. And I have hotkeys set as well where I can go frame by frame or I can go drawing to drawing. And that's usually how I work. I usually flip drawing to drawing. Okay, and then I hit play to see how it feels and, and to film my timing. So let's go to drawing three. And we want this ball to start coming down a little bit more so basically if this is drawing one and our balls coming down here and this is the squash this is our squash drawing I'm slowing out a frame one so what that means is if I do a drawing halfway and then half of that, half of that, half of that, half of that. And then it's going to do just the opposite when it comes back up. It's going to, this will be our squash, and the ball's going to shoot up. And it's going to be quick, and then slow, 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 slow. slow. And it's going to slowly start to drift up into our starting drawing. Okay. Let's go here. We're going to... Make the spacing a little more, and we're going to stretch it out a little bit more. We may need to move this, this drawing up. And let's come down one more. Do something like that. And then let's do, on frame 11, Let's do a contact pose where the ball is touching the ground. And it's pretty stretched out. And then it's going to squish. Uh, sound effects help. Okay. 
So I notice uh, I, I like how it's coming down. I like that speed, but it goes too fast from 11 to 12. So I'm going to go to frame 11 and I'm going to insert three frames to give me time to slow this down. So if I go to frame 13, I can start drawing here. This is the ball squishing. And now if I go to 15, I'm going to redraw this one more squished out like this. So a lot of times that happens. I, I have a key pose in 3D or 2D. I'll have a key pose and then as I'm working into it or out of it, that pose will, will change. So it's almost like um, your key poses are just kind of like a starting point, right? So let's go to frame 13 and add two more frames. So this will give us a, a place where we can draw on frame 15 because I want to ease into the squash drawing. And I want to add two more because I want to ease into it even more. And you know what? Let's add two more. Let's try it one more time. Okay, let's move, let's unlock our background layer, stretch that out, lock it again, and move our time marker down to 33. And we'll select the first drawing in our second column. Just see what that feels like. Okay, so that's a little slow, but I like having more drawings. So now I'm going to start playing with timing. Let's let's go to frame 20 and remove that frame and frame 18 and remove that one. And now let's move our time marker up to 31 and see how this feels. Okay, I'm going to draw this one a little more. This is drawing 18 now. I'm going to draw it more like closer to our squish drawing. And 17, I'm going to I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to favor that squish drawing. Let's look at the drawing at 15 again. Still feels really slow. I'm going to go to frame 16 and remove that frame. And I feel like it's drawing 15. This one that's. I'm just going to delete it. Delete seven. Those two, seven and eight. 
Move our time marker up. There we go. Okay. So now let's go ahead and click this little edge of our column and go to, you can right click or um, if you have this set up, auto renumber. And now our frames match our drawing. So one and one, three and three, five and five, seven and seven A. Okay, I'll show you how to fix that. Because I want it to say 579, not 7A. So if we go to our drawing room, this room up here, we can find drawing 7, click on it, right click, cut, and now we go back to our room, click on the cells, uh, select all cells by clicking this little side part of the column. And auto renumber and it fixes it one three five seven nine eleven okay and that's what I want I just want it nice and clean okay now let's shoot it back up back up to frame one I'm flipping between 15 and 1 15 and 1 15 and 1 so let's go to 17 and just Shoot it on up here, like this, just for a place to start, okay? And now let's go to 17, let's go to 19, and we'll start drawing. Actually, I'm just going to touch the paper to create um, a drawing at 17 and then I'm going to turn on onion skinning for well we're at frame 19 and I turned on onion skinning for frame 17 and I'm going to turn it on for frame 1 so we can see where we're coming from and where we're going So readjust my onion skinning. Let's try to get this ball up there. And I am going to delete frame 26. That way we don't have anything on thirds. I just want it uh, one drawing in between each of our drawing, you know, uh, the possibility of just putting one drawing in between our drawings. Double click frame 28 and type three and then five and enter and seven and enter. And what I'm doing is cloning my drawings up here down here and I'm gonna space these out on twos and basically what I can do now is flip between drawing 20 and back to one and it will change the drawing up here the very first one we started with so let's say the ball comes up to 20 but then 21, maybe we need it, let's like squash it a little bit, you know? Like it gets up here and it kind of bulges out. So th this is our new key pose at one. See how it's changed? So now let's ease up into that. So this is drawing 25. And sometimes it's like really hard to draw just a, a ball, you know what? Boing, boing, boing. But we could overshoot number one, we could 
We could do a lot of stuff. What I chose to do is take the top of the ball and hold it up there as close to the top as for as long as I can. I could probably even do it longer. And the same when it comes back up, we could have it here it is shooting up. Stretch that out and then let's make this one up really close. Okay, so drawing three kind of does overshoot a little. Let's just push it up and see what happens. Yeah, it gets a little more, a little more oomph, a little more character. Okay, let's select this little edge, auto renumber. See if everything matches, 19, 21, 23, 25. I'm gonna delete this stuff. And I'm going to draw a shadow. So I want the shadow do it like this. Just a little something. A little something something. Maybe it gets a little bigger as it comes down. And it squishes shadow underneath it. Shadow underneath it. One more shadow, and then doing. There we go. See how that feels. Oh, I'm gonna delete this. Okay, doing, doing, and I can see like right here. I don't like that little. Part poking out, uh, that little part poking out. So now we can go back and start cleaning it up if we need to. I think what I want to do is add, let's add a drawing in between 15 and 17 and just see if that m makes it mushy or if, if it adds to it. So here it comes up. I just feel like it needs something in there. To kind of connect those drawings, you know, like. Let's see what that feels like. Or what if it what if it kind of has that shape? Yeah, I don't like that. Let's go back to the other. Let's see if we can get it back. There we go. But I do like the idea that it's shooting up still. I just feel like it needs to connect to that drawing. Okay. So let's put that one on twos. So go to frame 16, insert a key. Now let's move our time marker down. Yeah, so that's our, our bouncing ball. So just have fun, experiment, move things around, uh, see what you come up with. Until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.